students. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at part two of describing distributions numerically, the variance, and the standard deviation. So, a uh, good way to start with this is just to calculate the variance and standard deviation so you get an idea of what it is. Uh, what we have here are the heights of 10 basketball players. And so, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate the mean. Now, I think we've all averaged numbers before, and we all remember how to do that. You, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you just add up these numbers and then divide by uh, the number of numbers that you have. So the mean is 800, our sum, divided by 10, which give us, gives us 80 inches. So the mean of these heights is 80 inches. These are basketball players, so they're really tall. This little guy right here, this is the Greek letter mu, okay? This is the symbol that we generally use for the population mean, okay? Remember in an early video we talked about the difference between population means and sample means. Uh, this is what we use for the population mean, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a measurement of spread. It measures how spread out your data are. Now, if you think about it, it's more spread out if the difference between all the data points and the mean is greater. So one thing that I could do is I could take the distance or the difference between each data point and mu and just add those up. The problem about doing that is that some are positive and some are negative and the sum is always zero. So just taking the distances and summing those up doesn't seem to work. So what I can do instead is I can take these distances and I can square them. That way they're always positive. So here are all the squared differences between, for example, our mean is 80, right? So 83 minus 80 gives us 3. The square of that is 9. 76 minus 80 is negative 4. The square of that is 16. 85 minus 80 is 5. The square of that is 25, etc., etc. And so you add all those up, get 110. And, uh, and then if you divide that by 10, you get 11. And so this is the average squared difference between each of the data points and the mean. And that is what the variance is. Okay? The variance is the average squared difference between uh, each data point and the mean. Okay? And uh, this little symbol right here is sigma. It's a lowercase sigma. It's another Greek letter. And, uh, and you'll notice that the variance is sigma squared. That's because our standard deviation is the square root of the variance. There's a reason why we do this. Okay, notice, our mean gives us 80 inches, right? Our units are inches. These differences here are also in inches. When we square the differences, what we end up with is squared units. Well, that's not a problem with squared inches, except we're talking about the height. Squared inches is what we use to describe area, not height. And also, remember, we're, gonna, we're not always looking at height. Sometimes we're looking at dollars, we're looking at people, we're looking at trees. Uh, squared dollars, squared people, squared trees, those are weird units. So the variance is kind of a strange uh, 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 measurement. And when you take the square root of that and you end up with good old inches again, it kind of it, it normalizes it, okay? It makes it, a, it makes it more understandable. So 3.3 is our standard deviation. That is a measurement of how spread out our, our data are. So the bigger your standard de deviation, the more spread out the data are. The smaller the standard deviation, the more scrunched in they are. If the standard deviation were zero, that means each one of these data points, each one of these numbers would be exactly the same. And so your distances here would be zero. The square distances would also be zero. Okay? So that's your population standard deviation. Now, remember, there's a difference between population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. Parameters, like mu, sigma squared, sigma, those describe a population. Statistics, like x bar for the mean, s squared for the variance, and s for standard deviation, these describe a sample of the population. Now, 
As it turns out, here, here we have the exact same calculations except for a sample instead of for a population. Calculating the sample mean, exactly the same. Okay? So this column is exactly the same. The distance, or the difference between each data point and that sample mean, exactly the same. When we sum up the, the squares of those differences, it's exactly the same. The only difference in these calculations is right there. Okay? When you're calculating the sample variance, instead of dividing by the number of numbers you have, okay, n, you divide by n minus 1, 1 less. Now, you might be wondering, why? Why would you do that? Well, there's actually a good reason. Remember, variance and standard deviation are measuring how spread out your data are, what, how, how uh, it measures the variability of the data. Okay? Imagine I have this population, and there's all this variety in the population. Now I take a little sample of that. There's also going to be some variety in that sample, but the variety in the sample is probably not going to be quite as great as the variety in the population. So what we do is, we make an adjustment. So instead of dividing by 10, we divide by 9, and it gives us a slightly bigger number. If you remember last time this was 11, well now it's 12.2. Last time this was about 3.3, well now it's 3.5. So it gives us a slightly bigger number, if you work out the mathematics, amazingly enough, this becomes a very, very good estimate, what's called an unbiased estimate of the population variance and the population standard deviation. Okay? So the only difference in the way we calculate that is with that denominator there. Okay? So let's, uh, uh, let's remember, let's, let's sum up how we're calculating these, uh, these, these measurements here. The population mean add up all of our uh, uh, data points, divide by the number of data points we have. The way, that we, uh, the way that we write this is with a capital sigma. This thing right here is a capital sigma. And what this means is, as k goes from 1 to n, I'm adding up all the x sub k. So x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm adding all those up, and then I'm dividing by n. Okay? The sample mean, Exactly the same thing. Exactly the same formula. Okay, when we, when we calculate our population variance, remember what we did? We took each point, and we took the difference between that and the, uh, uh, and the mean. We, uh, we squared that difference. We added up all the squared differences. Then we divided by the number of, uh, of points that we had, thereby getting the average squared dif difference. That's what our population variance is. The sample variance, we did the exact same thing. We looked at the difference between the, uh, each data point and the, the mean. We, uh, we squared that. We took the sum of that. And that's what, uh, oh, and then we divided by, not n, but n minus 1. And that's what gets us our sample variance. The, uh, the population standard deviation is just the square root of this. And the sample standard deviation is just the square root of that. Okay? Uh, now, we've looked at two different ways of, uh, of describing the center of a distribution of data, of, a, of a, uh, a set of data. The median and the mean. Okay? Um, usually they're kind of close together, but it's important to notice when one is bigger than the other one. Okay? Here we have a, uh, a distribution that is, as you can see, there's this tail going off to the right here. This is skewed right. And what happens is, here's our median, this uh, kind, of, uh, kind of yellowish line. And this blue line is our mean. What happens is, as this gets pulled out here, the mean goes in the direction of the, uh, of the tail. And so when something is skewed right, the, the, uh, the mean is always bigger than the median. When it's skewed left, Here's a distribution that's skewed left. Notice that now our median is bigger than our mean. And if it's symmetric, they're exactly the same value. Okay, so uh, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, when should we use these? Uh, well, let's look at some pros and some cons of why we would use them. Uh, they're also good for comparisons, just like the, mean, the median and the IQ are. Uh, and it's what we end up using for statistical inference. Uh, because the, the, the math associated with them is very easy to, uh, to uh, manipulate. Uh, 
Uh, some cons. The mean and standard deviation are not good measurements to use for heavily skewed distributions. When your distribution is skewed, you ought to use the median and the IQR. And also, it's not resistant to outliers. Okay, remember when we were talking about the median and the IQR? If, uh, if I have an outlier, a, a data point that's way over to the, to the uh, right of the rest of my data, and I wiggle it around, it doesn't affect the median and the IQR at all. It does affect the mean, and it does affect the variance and the standard deviation. All right? So, uh, so that's, that's it for this video. And uh, 